Good morning. Good morning. How are you? You look different this morning. How come? Um, oh, that's right. We've got to go do a talk today. No, you have to do a oh, talk I today. I have to do a talk today. <laughs> look out, folks. This could be serious. It's the first time that he's done a talk by himself. What's your subject? Uh, the subject today is email marketing. This is actually for my marketing business. Yeah, right. it's very cool. Right. We're very excited. Yeah. But we did do some exercising. We so did. You went to the gym. What'd you do? I went to the gym and I did a marathon workout of shoulders and triceps. Marathon, I think sprint. Sprint. Yeah, you're right. Marathon. That's silly. No, <laughs> I did a sprint workout of shoulders and triceps. And today was a cardio day for me. So um, I did cardio here at home, which gives me a little more time because I don't have to spend the time in the car back and forth to the gym. Right. Unfortunately, we have an AMT here. Right, which is a... What does that stand for? I don't know. Something. Some, T yeah. must be trainer. I don't know. Yeah, it is trainer. Motion is the middle one, yeah. but it's, ha it's half of a stair climber and kind of half of an elliptical. That and it has the yeah, that kind of thing. It's the same when you find the gym. It's the same quality. Yeah. yeah. So I did that this morning. And so now we're, um, as soon as we get done here, we're going to jump in the car and we're going to pop over to the Bear Library for Russ to do his talk. Which is a free event for anybody in the area that wants to learn about email marketing or any of the other, I think there's four other libraries that you could actually watch it, um, tell a whatever they call it. Conference. Teleconference. Yeah. Um, I should probably see if we're pixelating, huh? Yeah, well, you know, even if we are, we're going to do it anyway. Yes, we are. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Well, fortunately, we got smart and we started recording these. Um, yeah, so I have the camera running. So um, I've been getting some questions lately about people who are afraid to start um, doing whole food plant-based because they're afraid it's just another diet and they're going to fail again. Right. Um, so we want to talk about that. And then talking about staying consistent because I feel like they kind of go together yeah I um, think they do. so yeah a lot of people been been asking about that so I thought it might be a good subject for today so let's talk first about the fear of failure sure what are your thoughts about that because I know we see it also when people talk about working out like they don't want to start working out because they won't succeed at it right I know when you went back to school your family was like don't bother you'll never finish I don't think well I mean talking to the psychologist here again um, however, I mean, nobody likes to fail, right? No matter what it is, no matter how big or how small the task, if you do it, you want to succeed at it. And for a lot of people, the thought of not succeeding and then the, um, unfortunately, criticism, because the people, a lot of times, yeah. you know, there's the, the people you think are there to support you will be the first to criticize you, mm -hmm. and that, that sometimes is heartbreaking, and it's, it's scary to get started. So I think that's, a, that's one of the big um, you know, sticking points for people to get started in any type of, um, whether, whether it be health related or like I, when I went back to school at a very ripe old age, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Kristen. Morning, Kristen. Um, well, you know, so when I work with speakers and I do uh, speaker coaching, obviously stage fright and the fear of speaking in public is right. something that I spend a lot of time working on. And I think that this may be relevant too, is that one question I ask my speaker clients pretty consistently is who are you allowing to judge you and why? And so I think that in this case, if you're concerned about starting whole food plant-based because you're afraid that people are going to judge you, who's judging you and why are they judging you? Mm. And I find more often than not when I work with speakers that it's not the fear of other people's judgment so much, although that is part of it. It's their own judgment and their right. own inner voice and their own critic right. that they're having to overcome. And I think that that's going to be really similar when it comes to starting um, a new lifestyle because that's what whole food plant-based is. This right. is not a diet you go on for six weeks and then go back. Right. And that's why diets don't work they're, because they're not – you can't sustain most of these the diets that are out there. You know? They're not healthy to We've sustain. We've talked before about how you can't trick your body into being low calorie forever. Like it right. just doesn't work. We're designed to take in a certain amount of calories. Right. And so you have to feed your body. Um, you have to give it the volume it needs to feel full and feel satisfied. And I don't, I, I don't know if the science is still there, but when I was bodybuilding and I researched about dieting and fat and all that stuff, is what, what, what I read back then was that as you decrease your calories, your metabolism will slow down to adjust to that calorie intake. So it becomes harder and harder. If so you do it consistently right, over a right, long, long period of time. Right, which is why intermittent fasting works, because it's balancing right, right, it right, around. Right, right, right. I'm just talking mm -hmm. about a standard diet now. Right. Mm -hmm. So as you're dropping your calories, so what happens is you have to constantly keep dropping your calories until you reach a point where you're 
in a serious zone, you know, you're in a danger zone where you're not taking enough calories to sustain your body, and then you start losing things like brain function. We've talked know? before how your brain needs 500 calories of carbs a day to function. Like that's just, that's mm -hmm. reality. So if you're cutting a lot of carbs, your brain is not getting the carbs it needs. But I do think that it's, it's important for people to recognize that the interesting thing about whole food plant-based and what makes it different than your, a regular diet is first of all, it's a lifestyle. But secondly, you don't have to do it 100%. Right. But we've talked a lot about how when we first started this, the first 15 pounds we lost was just doing it about 75%. Right. Literally just adding more plants. Right. Good morning, morning Esther. Esther. Hey, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Um, so you Congratulations can't. on, I'm sorry. Oh I'm yeah, no, you. go ahead. Congratulations on your award the other night. I was there, and as you know, and I was very happy to see you get that. Yeah, that was fun. Um, he came home and that was one of the things he shared with me. Mm -hmm. So you can't really fail at adding plants to your diet. Like that's not something, you just do it. You have some, you eat some plants. What you can fail at is deciding, you know, setting this goal for yourself of I'm going to be 100% whole food plant-based. I'm not going to eat any meat. I'm not going to eat any dairy. I'm not going to eat any eggs. I'm not going to eat any oil. I'm not going to eat any sugar. I'm not going to eat. I mean, oh, oh my. my God, <laughs> that's exhausting to say. Right. So what if rather than setting yourself up for this ridiculous goal of I'm going to be like Russ and Robin and be 100% when it took us nine months to get here, right. what if you just said, I'm going to start adding plants to my diet. I'm right. going to add oatmeal. I'm going to add kale, which is the bane of people's existence. People hate kale. So right. if you don't like kale, don't eat kale. Eat spinach. Yeah, you know, definitely. I'm going to add sweet potatoes. I'm going to add grains. Whatever it is, start, you know, start picking some things that you say, you know what, three times a week I'm going to add right. something. And by the way, eating a baked sweet potato, I don't know if our taste buds have changed that Oh, much. I'm sure they it's have. It's like eating candy. It's just phenomenal how sweet that is. Last night I had cashews and raisins and it was crazy how yummy it was. Yeah, <laughs> like dangerous. Good. And that's the thing about changing this diet is your, your taste buds change from taste buds that want a lot of sodium fat, and salt, fat and sugar. to... Mm -hmm. A, a taste buds that are picking flavors out that you never knew existed before. Right, yeah. that's true. So I think that, you know, obviously if, if you have a real fear of failure and you're not wanting to start yet another diet, um, and this talk isn't enough because obviously it's a super high level, I would highly encourage you, go ahead and book a consultation with me and let's work through that for right. you, just for your health. I think that it's going to be worth it for you to figure out where is that judgment coming from? Where is that fear coming from? And how do you overcome it? And then how do you start? And what does that look like? And if you do backslide, right? how do you not judge yourself so harshly as to say, I'm a complete failure. I'm never doing it again. Forget it. It's not ever happening. Right. By the way, her, her doctor coined her as a nutritional therapist. Yes. Yeah, so that's apparently my title on right. our, our journey. I'm a nutritional therapist, um, which is great. I like that. That works. Mm -hmm. But I would love to help you figure that out. Even if whole food plant-based isn't the direction you're going to go, which obviously I think it's the best direction. Right. But um, if you're going to go... If you want to make progress in your health in general and you feel like you've got a fear of failure that's keeping mm -hmm. you from it, let's let's figure that out. Let's right. let's fix it. Right. You know, start on the path to fixing that. Right. So then let's go ahead. Did you the only thing I was going to add is uh, another way to get started. I mean, the very basic of getting started would be when you sit down to eat your meals, eat your vegetables and your starches before you eat your proteins. Right. And start don't and don't put animal products on your vegetables and starches. Yeah, don't put yeah, don't put cheese on broccoli or you butter know. and sour cream on potatoes. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really like um, lemon pepper seasoning on things. I found that to be really good. Lime juice is really good mm -hmm. on uh, lime juice on broccoli, I think is wonderful. I use apple cider vinegar. Uh, yeah, and I now, can't. That breaks and, my and mouth. I out. also use, so I have a baked potato, and this, I understand it's not for everyone. <laughs> As Robin says, you're a strange human. <laughs> is I will put hot sauce and then apple cider vinegar on a baked potato. And that is spicy. That's spicy, but it is yummy. <laughs> so yeah, like he said, um, a good way to start is to make sure that you have a vegetable and a starch on your plate and eat them first. Right. And then if you ha still have room for some meat product, then it, you right, know, do right. that. But I think moving toward it slowly is gonna help you overcome that fear of failure. Exactly. They're laughing at you because you're silly <laughs> I'm not a silly human. <laughs> <laughs> so then let's, that's how to kind of deal with the, the fear of failure. And good morning, Laura. Morning, Laura. the feel, fear of failure and how to get started slowly and give yourself some reasonable goals. You know, 
start looking at what processed foods you have and what you could replace them with. Right. That's always a, a really good goal to right. have. So some reasonable goals are going to help you with that fear of failure. So then now you've got someone else to say, <laughs> I, I, want, I want to switch to consistency and he okay. keeps coming I'm going to say this and then I'll be quiet for no, three or four seconds. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only thing I can say too is, so based on our research and all the documentaries we've watched, um, the typical American diet consists of three meals that has three animal proteins per meal, right? I mean, not, not per no. meal, three no. animal proteins with per, each meal. Right, and then there's snacks in between our processed foods. Right, right. That may or may not So be think about proteins. the possibility of instead of having three meals with animal proteins, only have two. Start there, right? That's yep. a place to start. And See, then it's you can pixelating go to today. It's pixelating. Hopefully it'll come back soon. Yeah. Fortunately, we do record We have a these. camera running, so. Right, and then we'll be posted on the r and Journey page, non-pixelated. Yeah, later today after I get a chance to edit it. Right. So anyway, you were saying... <laughs> You're done saying? Yeah, that's all I meant. That's what I want to say is this. You can just start, you know, for breakfast. Cut back, so. Yeah, don't, don't have the eggs or the bacon or the cheese or the milk for breakfast and have the oats and fruit. And then that's your meal. You're not having any animal proteins. Right. Right. And, then, and you, can have, you can make cold cereal that doesn't have sugar in it, too. Right. Like rolled oats and raisins and stuff can be eaten cold. Right. So that's, and we will put seeds in it. Right. You can make your own granola cereal, too, using seeds and rolled oats and, uh, right. you know. Uh, fruit, um, raisins, dates. Right. Excuse me. Hmm. So, okay, one meal a day, one day a week, whatever it is, start, give yourself reasonable goals. So now can we talk about consistency? Let's talk consistency. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So uh, we get asked pretty often, okay, you guys have been doing this for a while now and you're, you do it all the time. How do you make that happen? How do you, how are you so consistent about it? I think for us, it's become just, it's the way we eat. It's part of, it, it, it's just like, if I were to say to you, how are you consistent about eating animal products? Right. I mean, for me, it's definitely, it my, just is. Yeah, it's definitely my background with bodybuilding. I mean, I used to have to watch what I ate all the time, mm -hmm. you know, depending on what season, what time of the year it was. But most people don't have that background. No, I'm saying so, so for me to jump into this, it was simple, but for how does, you know, people that don't have that discipline do mm -hmm. it. So, mm -hmm. okay. so the, I guess the point is, is that how do you eat now? Like, how do you manage to eat now? Well, that becomes the same thing to be consistent with, with eating whole food plant-based. You just have to change the way you think about food. Right. You have to change the way that, what comes to mind when you're hungry. And this week, I actually, I don't, Russ doesn't know this was an experiment. I did an experiment this week. Um, I didn't cook on the weekend. I didn't make anything this weekend. I just put some baked potatoes. I made four baked potatoes, four sweet potatoes, and that's all I made on the weekend and I wanted to see what will we eat if I haven't done meal prep if I right. haven't and I, I did that um, newsletter last week that I talked about here are nine things that we eat when we don't meal prep but I hadn't ever done it for a whole week so I decided you know this week I'm gonna try it I'm gonna see what it looks like if all we have is some baked starches sweet right. potatoes and potatoes and then good Go luck from there. figure yeah. it out and have you even noticed no I think we're fine <laughs> Yeah. And last night he cooked. I mean, it was funny. He came into my office. He was like, do you want quinoa or pasta? And I was like, oh, I think I want pasta. He was like, okay. Then he comes back upstairs a couple minutes later. He goes, we don't have any pasta. I'm like, oh. So it's quinoa then, right? So Good. First choice. He ended, up, he ended up making, you know, quinoa with vegetables and... Tomato sauce. You know, pasta sauce. Yes. Just a regular marinara. Right. And then um, we each had an orange. And we each had an orange for dessert. And that was, I was fine. Was I was very good. happy. So I think that part of being consistent is changing the way you think about food and changing what comes to mind as, oh, okay, this is what I'm going to eat. Um, go ahead. I said, you have said it, you've said it before, um, that it's so ingrained in, in Western society, the American diet, that if it doesn't have an animal protein, it's not considered a meal. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think that's, that's the thought process that has to change. There's no advantage to having the meat, the meat protein over a plant protein. Actually, the plant, po the plant protein is going to be better and healthier for you. Right. Um, so, you know, this isn't the time of, you know, the, the you know, 1500s where the kings got to eat all the meat and the peasants got to eat all the, you know, the starches and everybody always looked forward to eating the meat. You know, they died young. I mean, that's it. Kings did, Kings, yeah. the kings, the royalty, they all died young. They were all getting heart disease and all the other ailments that we get now in Western society. Yeah. So yeah, it's a matter of changing, but it's also, I guess changing your taste buds is going to make a difference, but the consistency becomes how bad do you want? 
right. you know, and, and what are your goals? You know, they, when, in the entrepreneur space, they always say, what's your why? Because your why is what drives you. So why do you care? Why are you eating this way? Why, are you, why do you want to be healthy? What's in it for you to be healthy? Right. And speaking of that, I mean, what we listened to today, and, and I checked a few and you verified it, is that um, Pritikin, who, and I'm, I'm saying this, nobody else is, might be considered the, the, the father of whole food plant-based nutrition. Russ could decide that Prinikin is the father of right? whole food plant-based nutrition. Um, but he started researching this and came up with this way of living because he was dying of heart disease, right? And that's what you told me, right? That's what we heard, yeah. Yeah, so he was, he was a good case of somebody who, if he didn't do something, his future was nil. Quite honestly. And they, last I heard, he um, I don't know when he died or if he died, but he was 97 years old that, during one of the interviews that I, I right, listened right. to. So. so from death's bed's door, if you can say it that way, yeah. to 97 years old because he changed to a whole food plant-based lifestyle. So I, that that would be a question I would ask you is, you know, what is your why? Why, why do you want to be healthier? What's in it for you? And if you can justify... What it's in, what's in it for you, that's going to be what's going to help you go back to right. being consistent right. because you have that goal, you have that why. And uh, for us, obviously, the why is we intend to live healthy until we're done living. Right. None of this slope off, die slowly, be right. amputated the nonsense. And, 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 you know, no. Nurture the pharmaceutical industry. Right. Our goal is to be as healthy for as long as we can and then be finished. Right. And that be it. Okay. So I would encourage you to. You know, look at your why. Give yourself that that goal that says, you know what, this is why this matters to me. This is why I'm going to do it. Um, educate yourself so that you can change the way that you think about food and what food is. Because obviously, like Russ said, in the American diet, it's what meat am I having, and that makes it a meal. Change that. We eat potatoes and beans and corn and peas, and are like, okay, that's a meal. That's a meal, absolutely. And it's fine. Yeah. Um, and then. You know, who's judging you and why? Who, right. who are you allowing to judge you? Are you judging yourself? And where is that judgment coming from? Right. And that's going to help you with your fear of failure. It's going to help you with the consistency. And, you know, real, I'm, and I'm not, this is not an advertisement. This is me as a person who cares about other people's health saying, I can help you with that. Right. If, if you, you know, book a consultation with me, uh, you can go online, go to our services page, services page, just click the button and then I'll send an email and we'll set something up and right. we'll work through all of that together in right. about an hour and give you a whole lot of information that you can then go forward with. Exactly. Do you have anything you want to add to all of that? Uh, no, I think I've said my piece okay. for well, today. We have, only for today. Yeah, only for this moment. I know there's more pieces coming today. Because Russ has to go give a talk. I do. Which is super exciting. It's going to be a lot of humana, 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 and hoo doo 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 It then... is not because you have a good speaker coach. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Aces. <laughs> so if you're getting value of these, please do like and share them. We've enjoyed your uh, hearts and thumbs up and laughing faces today. It's always fun to see those go across the screen when right, we're talking. Right. So thanks for being here. Um, and it's going to pixelate at the end apparently. Right. Um, but... And visit our YouTube page if you want to find other videos that aren't pixelated. Are, they're also on our Facebook page, R&R Journey. And come visit our website, rnrjourney.com. Join our newsletter. Join the website if you're interested in more information. Right. Uh, we, well, it's going to say we are adding some. We're adding two new videos this week, right? One will be to the uh, free section. And one will be to the member section. And those will be in the newsletter right. as to which ones we're adding. And as Russ hinted to yesterday, we are going to try a new format for Fridays. On Friday, we're going to try and do a real quick, brief overview of the subjects we've talked about during the week because I'm hearing from people that they're having trouble getting through all the videos. So on Fridays, we're try going to try and do an overview of that. Right. And we're going to try that tomorrow. I'm so excited. We'll see how that goes. I think that's a good plan. All right. That's it. That's it. Okay. So with that, we will say eat real food. Not too much. Mostly, Mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, we'll guys. We'll see you tomorrow.